Welcome to the Aerodale. I'm Michael Farrell, and today we'll be talking about school security, social media, and an update on the new building, plus much, much more coming up on the Aerodale. Directly from the Alma High School News Studio, covering news and sports from where it matters, you're watching the Aerodale. The end of the year is coming soon at Alma High School. We spoke to the counselor, Ms. Moore, about how to prepare for the end of the year, whether that be your grades or just as simple as where you turn your Chromebook in. I think the big thing is check your grades in chalk <laughs> right now. See what you have missing that teachers will still allow you to turn in. Um, nobody's blaming them if they're not letting you turn in stuff from like January. But yeah, you know, see what you can still turn in. Work with your teachers to get any late work in. Even if you're not getting full credit, some credit is better than no credit um, in order to get those grades up. As far as being motivated, you know that that countdown of what 13 days left can can be a motivator in itself, knowing that you don't have that much longer. Um, but I still think we have to take it one day at a time and determine ourselves every single day uh, to do the work that we need to do because even if you've worked so hard on all this makeup work to try to get it caught up, if you don't do your work for the next 13 days, it's not going to help you at all. So again, just coming to school every day, doing what the teachers ask you to do, working on that makeup work, um, and then preparing for your end of semester tests as well, making sure you're studying and finishing strong. Uh, we will have summer school for any kids who fail courses, so if you are failing courses that you have to pass, then that's something we may be talking to you about in the next couple of weeks. So unless you want to spend two weeks of your summer here at school with us, I would say that should be enough motivation <laughs> um, to get your grades up and do everything you can to be successful for the next few weeks. Chromebooks are going to be due before you leave. Um, it really depends on the student and your testing schedule. We got the schedule this morning, May 25th, Math, English, and CTE will be giving their end of semester finals, and then May 26th will be Science and Social Studies. So some of those may require your Chromebook to take, so you'll obviously get to keep it through taking your finals, um, but once those are over and you're done with it, you'll have to turn it in before you go to summer uh, to Mrs. Thixton in the library, Chromebooks and chargers. So be looking for your charger if you don't know where it is. Um, I'm Tegan and Remy for Airwaves Media. Thank you for listening. Safety is important in school. There are many situations where certain actions need to be taken in order to protect the students and faculty members. Setson Goodson and Jace Brantley talked to the school resource officer to find out more about how we are kept safe at our school. A school security is imperative to make sure that students stay safe while in the schools. There are certain measures for a student having a weapon on campus would be for the officer on duty to go find the student and take care of the problem. If an explosion were to happen, here are the measures the that the school would take. It's in the fire department and then we're just going to deal with uh, try to evacuate people away from the school that are, you know, not immediately next to the Here explosion. are what the measures are for a chemical hazard or spill. So on campus, then we're going to uh, start evacuating, and then we're going to notify our dispatch, which will, and they will in turn notify the Office of Emergency Management, and they will respond and, and kind of take control Here of Here is the difference between a school's <laughs> Here is the difference between a school's officer and a Here's street cop skier. Here is determined by your uh, individual police department, your administrator, your chief, or your sheriff. And for our eye gear is exactly the same as patrol, except for the taser. Okay. We don't carry a taser in the schools. But the, other than that, our gear is this exactly is the same. This is Jace Brantley and Stetson Goodson from my Always Media. The new activity building is currently being built to allow for a dry place for many of our programs here at Alma High School to utilize during adverse weather conditions. Ethan Moore and Lewis Alexander get the inside scoop on this massive undertaking. Alma High School is building a new addition that will serve a variety of students. Well, as is obvious to everybody, it's been a little slow getting going. We're uh, not, we're, we thought we'd be underway long before now, but circumstances have kept us from getting started. But the good news is we are just about ready to begin. Uh, uh, we'll start moving dirt uh, in a big way in about probably 10 more days. Uh, the rain, of course, you know, slowed us down a little bit getting started. The contractor had to finish up where he was and he couldn't because it was raining. Uh, it slowed him down. But the good news is we are about to get going. We talked to Mr. Woolley about this addition. Well, th this is two or three different things. Uh, first of all, we're building agri agriculture facilities for our agriculture program, which will be two classrooms, a, uh, a building, a lab, uh, all the things that an agri program needs, plus a barn. Uh, agriculture, of course, involves animals, so there'll be a barn 
on the west side of the football stadium, which will be where they, uh, their, their animals live and stay and where they'll work with them. And then in addition to all that is the activity center, which is a building that uh, will be about the size of, uh, about the width of a football field and about two thirds of the length of a football field. That'll be used for a lot of different things. Uh, sporting teams will, of all kinds will be able to use it, plus all of our other groups that need space like that from time to time, uh, such as band and cheer and ROTC, uh, they'll, they'll use the building quite a bit, particularly when the weather is not good outside for them to go out. The new addition allows sports teams and other organizations to practice during bad weather conditions. If things go like we hope, uh, the barn will be finished before school begins in the fall of 23, a year, year and a half from now. Then the rest of the building sometime during that school year, say January, February of 24. This is Lewis and Ethan with Airwaves Media. Thank you for watching. The Alma High School FFA chapter has been working on trap shooting. Tyler Wilcox and Grayson Hopper dove deeper into this engaging competition. For those of you that don't know, the Alma Youth Sports Trap Shooting Competition was held on Saturday, May 7th in Jacksonville, Arkansas, and many members of our own agriculture program participated in the competition. We spoke to Aiden Rowe about his part in the program. Well, I think I have improved a lot. I, my first time I got like a, a 12 and a 13, and now I'm you know, hitting consistent 20s, you know, 18, 19, 20, around there. So I think I've improved a fair bit. Well, I think I did pretty well. I did above my average. I had a 19 and a 20 out of 25. So I believe that that's pretty good for someone like me. I haven't been trap shooting very long. Uh, yeah, I will absolutely be returning. I've had a blast doing it. Uh, I think I've really improved my shooting skills and it's just been you know, a real blast doing it. I'm Grayson. And I'm Tyler with Airways Media. Modern social media platforms have been known for degrading the mental health of impressionable people for years. Even from when magazines were prevalent, the minds of the public were shaped by the public figures on these platforms. Ben Mitchell and Destiny Wheeler looked further into how social media affects the mental health. How does social media impact our mental health? That's the question that runs through our minds here at Airwaves Media. And currently, we're here to shed light on that subject exactly. Here is Kim Hartline, a family practice physician from Paris, Arkansas. Social media effects that can happen for teens as well as anyone on social media, but particularly teens, can impact the way that it makes you feel about yourself. It can impact the, these are negative impacts, it can impact your self-esteem, especially if you are always seeing people who are having like, you know, a fresh hair day or they just got their nails in. Who can I go to if I'm having trouble with my mental health because of social media? If you're having any issues that you feel like you're just coming off the rails or you realize that you need to have some help, um, the first thing I tell people is like, go to your parents or guardian, guardian, whoever it is that you feel that you can trust that is an adult involved in your care. You should seek out a healthcare professional at your school, um, a minister in your church. Um, there are different facilities in the Fort Smith area that we reach out to, Valley Behavioral being one of them, or just your local emergency room if you can't get any help any other place. What are some of the effects of social media? Specifically spending like a majority of your time on social media all of your free time, if you notice that someone is doing that, or if you notice that yourself is doing that, um, isolating yourself from activities that don't involve being on the computer. Now we will explore the, how social media affects our students here at Alma High School. First off, this kind of impacts me in a bad way, I guess. I don't have very much social media because I, I just have one being Facebook. And uh, every time I go on there, I just see pictures of people who just take, like, look how hot I am, Ugh, look at my dog, they're so cute, Ugh, just all that. Makes you feel insecure about the way my life is, kind of, and how I look, because they look amazing, obviously. And I just feel a little uncomfortable. If you are having any problems with your mental health, there is a suicide hotline that is available for everybody 24-7. Now that you know some of the impacts of social media on your mental health, try to take care of yourself and your image. 
This has been Destiny Wheeler, Ben Mitchell, and Louis Alexander with Airwaves Media. Since 1996, the Morgan Nick Foundation has been helping to find missing children around this region of the country. In 2020, there were close to 340,000 missing children's cases reported to the FBI database. Josh Wagley took a deeper look into this troubling issue and how Morgan Nick Foundation is helping to solve these missing children's cases. Approximately 2,000 children go missing every day in the U.S. That's why the Morgan Nick Foundation was created. Yeah, we started back in 1996 uh, because in 1995, six-year-old Morgan Nick uh, went to watch a friend play baseball here in Alma. And uh, while she was playing just a couple of yards away from her mom with a couple of friends, um, Morgan was kidnapped. And a huge search took place. It still takes place today, but they have never found Morgan. Before the Morgan Nick Foundation, Arkansas did not have an organization that worked with families of missing or abducted children. Last year, they worked on 1,872 cases across the state of Arkansas. What a lot of people don't understand or realize is that at any given time in the state of Arkansas, there are more than 500 missing persons at a time. So. Every day, even if two go off, two more come on. So it always stays right around 500 missing cases at a time. The foundation works with families of kids under the age of 18 who are either taken without consent from their guardian or those that ran away. And so we've always worked with those families. Um, we serve them as best we can, whatever their needs are at the time. We act as a liaison between them and law enforcement. So we want to um, serve law enforcement in any way we can while they do their job searching uh, to find and help these children. So that can mean anything from family support, um, just a listening ear to uh, being there and helping with searches, um, working uh, to help search for these kids in other capacities, maybe um, technology or some other form. We do missing posters of these kids. Um, Studies have found that 86% of missing kids are found due to the missing posters put out by law enforcement and the foundation. Ms. Strickland states that her role as the assistant director is to help around the office and to educate the community about safety. This, um, my primary goal though my primary task is to be the educator for uh, the Morgan Nick Foundation which means that I go into all of the schools and do presentations for kids on um, how to on safety internet safety personal safety um, which covers everything from cyberbullying to sextortion and sex trafficking and everything in between uh, at the foundation, we really believe that education is the key to safety. So For more information, check out their website and various social media platforms. For Airways Media, I am Joshua Wagley. Summer break is almost here, and students along with faculty members are excited to spend their summer vacations in many different ways. Jackson Freldenhoven asked around Alma High School to see what people's plans were for summer vacation. The last day of school is May 26th, and summertime is soon approaching. And so many people, kids and teachers alike, are making plans for their upcoming break in the hot summer sun. Why don't we see how many people are going to spend their time in this fun, hot weather? First, we're going to ask about how people feel about school coming to a close. Let's see what Kyle Bowen and Lycan Brumley have to say. I love summer so much. And I hope that it comes sooner. I'm not necessarily looking forward to it being over, but I'm looking forward to the opportunity to be able to get things back together, get organized again, and start over, or, or you know, get a fresh start into a new school year. So, yes and no. Um, I don't like to see students go um, because that's what makes our job fun, and I'm here year round. Um, so I'm here every day, so sometimes it does get a little boring when there's no one else around or no students in the building, but I am looking for the opportunity to restart and refresh. 
Now that we have their opinion on the school year ending very soon, why don't we see what they are planning on doing this summer? To Philmont Scout Ranch in New Mexico, probably hiking. For the most part, I'll be here. Um, but we do have lots of show animals on feed, so we'll be going to different stock shows um, throughout the summer and looking at a lot of pigs. Um, and I also plan to go see my family in Oklahoma and Indiana as well. Everyone can't wait for summer to hit us. What kind of things are you going to do this summer? This is Jackson for Aldenhoven with Airwaves Media, signing off. And now for a special segment of the newscast as Destiny Wheeler, Ben Mitchell, and Lewis Alexander take a deep dive into the paranormal and unveil some mysterious activities. Alien stories can often seem false, but here today we've got one that we hope you can trust. Mr. Reeves, allegedly, 11 years ago, was abducted by aliens. Mr. Kirkendall told us his story. We decided to interview him first. I mean, it's even though it's been 11 years ago, I remember it like it was yesterday. I mean, we were, um, I was, I had the same office and um, I had uh, visited with Mr. Reeves. I was going down to the field house to talk to him about something and, you know, it was just a, this a weird glow and he wasn't around. And what I can tell you is, is that um, I didn't talk to him that evening. The next day I saw him, he seemed different and acted really weird. So I don't know what kind of what kind of stuff they did to him, but it obviously affected his behavior. It affected the, um, he's just, he's not the same person. And every now and then, he does some weird things that makes me think that something very odd happened. And according to him, he, he uh, it took him a while for him to say that he was actually abducted by aliens. Yeah. Um, I think he was a little embarrassed by it, saying that it happened to him, but you're going to have to visit with him to if, see what kind of things he, he tells you. And, um, you know, he didn't like talking about it because, again, I think they did some weird experiments on him. Next, we interviewed Dr. Wood. Here's what she said about this whole situation. Okay, so, Dr. Wood, if you heard that one of your fellow faculty members were abducted by an alien, would you believe them? Like they said, they were abducted by real aliens? Yeah. Um, I'm not even sure I believe in aliens. Um, well, we asked Mr. Kirkendall, uh, and apparently Mr. Reeves was actually abducted by aliens. And Mr. Kirkendall believes he was, believes Mr. Reeves was abducted by an alien? Well, Mr. Kirkendall was there. Oh. Okay, well, if Mr. Kirkendall said it, I, I believe Mr. Kirkendall. Yeah. So yeah, I would say he probably Mr. Reeves probably was abducted by an alien. And do you believe in aliens? Um, I'm not real sure if I believe in aliens, but if they both said it, I believe what they say. Yeah. Okay. Then we went to Officer House. We figured if anyone would know about aliens, it'd be him. Sir, um, mm -hmm. let's say that one of your fellow faculty members got abducted by aliens. What would you think? Personally, well, I, I don't really believe in aliens, so I'd be highly suspicious of anyone who claimed that. Yeah. Um, so we have heard rumors that Mr. Reeves has gotten or had gotten abducted by aliens about 11 years ago. Um, we asked Mr. Kirkendall, even he said so, and Mr. Reeves told us the story. Uh, do you believe that? Do you Mr. Reeves told you that he got abducted. Yes, sir, he did. Really? Yeah. He well, himself. He's, he said 11 years ago there was a flash of light and then he was, boom, on an alien ship. Wow. Now, I haven't heard this story, but, you know, like I said, I don't really believe in aliens, so it, it, I wouldn't really believe a story like that, even from Mr. Reeves. That makes sense. I, I guess we were wrong. So, finally, after strenuous hours of work, we decided to ask Mr. Reeves himself. We interviewed Mr. Kirkendall about your alien story. Um, could you offer us more information? Could you tell us what the aliens were like? What all happened that day? Yeah. Um, it was about 11 years ago. I can't remember exactly, but me and him, we were down by the field house and it was a cloudy day and so if 
there was flashes of light that I thought were lightning and so we continued and we were trying to get from the stadium down into the field house um, before a storm hit and the next thing I knew there was a large flash of lightning uh, or I thought was lightning um, I come to uh, and I'm in a, a metal capsule uh, bright and there are creatures that I don't recognize yeah. um, I don't remember much at that point I hear them talking they're saying things that I don't understand um, and um, I kind of uh, black out uh, at that point um, and the next thing I know I'm on earth mm -hmm. and Mr. Kirkendall told us about how you've been acting differently after that day could you yeah um, and it's weird but some things that we've noticed is I had to wear reading glasses now I don't see very well now yeah. and I have completely lost my sense of humor since then yeah this has been Ben Mitchell Dusty Wheeler and Lewis Alexander signing off of Airwaves Media with a swift and nice alien story Tune in next time for some more paranormal activities. Maybe something more odd might happen. Maybe curiosity might strike again. Who knows? Have you ever heard any of the rumors about the ghosts in the backstage of the pack? Who are these ghosts? What do the ghosts want? Why are they here? Ben Mitchell, Lewis Alexander, and Destiny Wheeler have interviewed Mr. Hobson and a few theater kids to uncover the mysteries behind these rumors. Here's the footage of us interviewing Hobson. Um, I've, I've heard stories of uh, ghosts here, you know, throughout the school in different parts, um, you know, including our Performing Arts Center. Well, you know, they're, again, they're mostly rumors, but, um, you know, there's all kinds of stories or, that go around about uh, these spiritual beings. Um, one that you do hear quite often is that, um, you know, it may be the, the son of uh, Bonnie and Clyde who uh, came through uh, Alma years ago. And, uh, you know, he still haunts the place. Um, you know, some say that he is, you know, trying to revenge his uh, mother and father's death uh, by exacting revenge upon the, maybe the great, great, great grandchildren uh, of the people that, that killed Bonnie and Clyde. Now, that's just, that's just a rumor, I'm sure. You know, there's no truth to that at all, but, you know, you hear stories. A ghost? Even those that are professional killers? We don't know. All we know about these ghosts is that they're scary and spooky. What would you happen to know about these ghosts? Who are they in their living life? What are their motives for hunting the living? Here is Ryan Morris, here to talk about the local ghost in the back rooms of the pack. No, I haven't seen a ghost, but I've definitely heard one. So one time during ELF, when we were doing all of our rehearsals and everything, we were going through it, but it got really quiet at one point, and we were listening, and we heard a cricket chirping. Now, if you don't know, if you hear a cricket chirping, that usually means a bad joke has happened or something just not funny. So we were like, there must be a cricket that got in or something. So we're looking around trying to find this cricket. We couldn't find it anywhere. Well, we realized it's coming from underneath the stage. So I go down there and investigate. I can't find a single cricket and it sounds like it's coming in through the walls. So I'm just like looking around for this cricket and I can't find it anywhere and I'm just hearing this chirp that just keeps nagging us on and so I just had to leave it alone because I couldn't find it. So we went up there and for the next week we would try to do something if it got quiet we hear the cricket chirping. And so I truly believe that it was a ghost trying to mock us or whatever for our performances. I don't know for sure, but I have heard rumors that uh, the pack was built on this neighborhood and there was a certain house that some, there was a family there and they didn't really like that their house was going to have to be torn down. And so without anyone else knowing, they stayed in the house while it was being demolished and died there. And so I've heard rumors that they haunt the pack now and like try to keep people from being in the pack or whatever. I don't know, like there was one time during our production of Adam's Family that we got bats into the pack and everything, which is really spooky because you know that was kind of the thing about Adam's Family, is Halloween and all of a sudden we have bats in the pack. So I don't know, I mean, who knows? You know, I don't know if they really wanted to do any harm because I mean, Cricket's not gonna do much harm. I think they just didn't want us there. I think they were still angry about like what happened to them or whatever, so. See them? No. 
Uh, I don't think that I've ever seen a ghost, but uh, you know, here ago. Oh my God, look at him, he's so hot. Did you hear that? Yeah, I heard that. Yeah. Hear, hear, hear things, yes. Um, could the ghost in the back rooms possibly be the son of Bonnie and Clyde? Could he be back to hunt for revenge for his parents? Or could it be a family that wanted revenge? If that is the case, then I guess we're all doomed. Just kidding. From Annabelle to Chucky, haunted dolls can be found pretty much everywhere. But what are haunted dolls? We have turned to Tracy Wheeler, my grandmother, a paranormal investigator from Paranosis, to answer our questions. Tracy has five haunted dolls, Melody, Emily, Anna, and Sweet Pea. She, has, she had received these dolls from Paranosis. Littlefoot, her fifth doll, was built by Tracy 44 years ago and had lived in a haunted house for some time. During that time, spirits in the house latched onto the doll. Ooh. Tracy, how do haunted dolls come to be? Well, see, that's the research of it all. We're trying to find out, like, why are they there? You know, are they afraid to go to the light if there's a light? Or we don't know exactly why a spirit will attach to. And, and they're free. They can go if they want to. Are haunted dolls dangerous? They can. Oh, they can. Um, when the energy is high, uh... When these three come, the energy was very high, which drained me and everything and kind of gave me a headache. Um, Mel is one that really would get me right here. You know, so they can affect you. You know, you just have to uh, be stronger. You know what I mean? Not all haunted dolls are evil like Annabelle, Chucky, and most likely Sweet Pea. It is preferred to treat these dolls with respect and kindness. If you happen to encounter an evil haunted doll, I suggest you report it to a paranormal investigator or someone of the such. Here are some clips of spooky things that happened during the interview with Tracy and some bloopers. And these balls, I'm going to show you. Okay, you turn them on. And they literally... You have to touch them to go off. Can you see that? I see it. It's still going. It takes a minute. And it's off. Whoa. Hers is already on, but she won't stop touching her. So we're just going to leave her alone. Okay. So, so wait, does it naturally blink like that? Or is she doing that? She's doing it. You have to see. Watch. I'll show you. When I pick this one up, I have to physically touch it. And so when I didn't think about it, but I we use a K2, okay, and they can manipulate it. If it blinks, it just, you know, they're trying to just see how it works. We turn it on. And I'm going to put this over here by Anna anyway. Okay. Because Anna does like it. Now, whether she does it, I don't know. It's never a guarantee. Okay. It's going off. See it? Yeah, I see it. This has been Destiny Wheeler, Louis Alexander, and Benjamin Mitchell here with Airwaves Media. Thanks for watching the final episode of The Airedale for this school year. And don't forget to subscribe and like our YouTube channel and follow all of our social media at Airwaves Media. And as always, go Airedales.